Yo, welcome back to our Pros Rawcast, where we'll be interviewing everything from rock stars to porn stars, from actors to influencers, and today we've got the amazing state champs here. So, welcome guys, thank you for joining us. Hello, hello. Glad to be here. Stoked. Glad A bra. <laughs> A bra. <laughs> you know what's really funny is people in England pronounce it exactly as we do, obviously, because we're English. <laughs> and then the first time that I met someone from a band after starting this was actually Mark Hoppus from Blink-182. And the whole conversation was just him stood looking at me like I was nuts, being like, up what? <laughs> it's, like, it, it sounds just, pretty crazy. Why are you saying? <laughs> yeah. Uproar. Uproar. We, we couldn't say it any differently, honestly. Uproar. Uproar. Yeah. Uproar. Uproar. If we keep saying it's going to sound like it's not in, like it's not a word. Rar XD, baby. Let's well, it's go. It's not. Rar <laughs> is not. Rar it's, XD? Yeah, it's not actually Rar a real XD. word. That's a word. <laughs> People keep bringing that up it's since we started this. I don't know what it is. You don't know what uh, RAR XD is? It's like, no? it's like you MySpace on my culture. Space? I was on MySpace. Yeah, but then you know like, what RAR XD is. You, I, you saw plenty of girls that you liked on MySpace were like they're posting a RAR XD photos. It's and like, and it's, a, it's a little X and a capital D. So that was like the scene <laughs> the kids cutesy, right? Yeah, the cutesy thing. Yeah, scene. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. A few people have brought it up and I'd like... Wasn't I, wasn't there something like like Rar is dinosaur for I love you or something like that's where we took it from. It was on a t-shirt. <laughs> oh, then you need to know this history. Yeah, much. you're doing <laughs> it all wrong. I need to know my own history. Yeah, man. like let us let us help you. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna say on camera that you're a poser, but <laughs> but, but, but it's looking it's looking kind of rough. No, but now this all makes sense and like we can help we can help yeah. progression. So we're good. <laughs> Steer it in the right direction. <laughs> right, yeah, this we're here for podcast you, is evolving as we go. So yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah. Well, we actually started like Upro, the club night. Cause basically, it started as a club night. It, it spread and we right. do more stuff. But we started in 2010, which I think is exactly the same time as you guys started. Oh, yeah. That's right. So we've sort of gone through the same musical period in time. That's mm-hmm. true. Like, I guess you've seen, I don't know if it's different in America, but exactly the same sort of changes as we have in the UK. I think at the moment it's going through a really fucking cool period. I think it was a really cool period back in 2010. I think we had a shit time in like 2016, 2017. Like, oh, you don't have to agree with that. Well, I <laughs> like think it's we different. We had a great it's time. Very, yeah, we yeah. did. Those, oh, are you, like, those are like when we You guys popping. are blowing up. Yeah, so it's different. And I think it's totally different from the US to the UK. I was just going to say, because I'm wondering like what the shift is that's happening here, that's happening in the United States, because it's a... It's a massive shift in the United States right now. What's popular in music? What's cool? What's not? I think for a minute there, pop punk was becoming pretty uncool. Mm, And now it's like the coolest thing. Yeah, it's totally bad. But it's a different version of pop punk. Yes. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely, man. Yeah. And so what's going on over here? You said there's like a massive, like, you think there's, it's in a, it's in a good place right now? I, I think pop punk's in a good place. I think the alternative music scene is in a good place. Yeah. Like from my point of view, Everything was awesome until about 2013. Mm-hmm. And then shit started getting really serious. And bands, I, I say this all the time, but bands started doing music. They stopped doing house party videos and they started doing I'm um, Angry in the Woods wow. videos. Okay. Like, yeah. So the fact that you're saying this, I actually fully agree. And I think we all do here at this table. <laughs> we've all we've all realized that. Man, music, somebody should really do a sick new house party They video. really should. <laughs> it needs to happen, guys. <laughs> Couldn't be us. Nah, definitely. But somebody should. <laughs> Uh, I definitely don't mean to cut you off, but we have no, actually no, talked cool. about like the intention of of like having fun, like with with this new record we have coming. You know, like we were like, what happened? Like when when did we become angry in the woods promo band? You know, you're on you're on the fucking train tracks. Why? <laughs> yeah, it was more it was more train track band. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just train like, tracks. It's gray skies. Yeah. But yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, it's just, we're trying to have fun again. I feel like fun has been lost. And so. I think I'm, that is coming to be a part of, like, the new wave of pop punk, I guess. It is a lot more about the immaturity and bringing mm-hmm. back the youth vibes, I guess. And But in a different way, though, you're totally right, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like the people who are being exposed, the younger generation that's being exposed to pop punk right now is 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 taking influence from those bands that were doing it, you know, in a fun way, Blink-182, you know, it's people looking at, like, some 41 music videos and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, they only know that through, you know, Travis Barker or Machine Gun Kelly or whatever's happening right now. And they're like, oh, that's what pop punk is. Like, we don't know anything about the pop punk that's been happening the last 10 years. We know about, you know, what this pop punk is based on. So we're going to do that. And so it's all fun. It's all games. And and I think that's really cool. And, and that's what we kind of wanted to do as a band. Yeah. You know, right. stop taking ourselves so seriously and just like 
dude, we've been doing this for a long time and it is fun. Like, so let's stop acting like it's not fun. And yeah, fucking have we have the coolest time. job yeah. in the world. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's why it should be fun. And I think that's totally been accepted again now. Yeah. But I think it's it's pretty new, like 12 months that it's become accepted to be fun. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's why I think we're in such a positive place, man. Mm, yeah, yeah. It was, it's tough because I feel like we saw the line between like fun and corny or, you know, like trying too hard. You know, I think when people think about pop punk, um, there was for a minute like a negative connotation as far as like, oh, those, that's just like it's not real music. It's mm -hmm. just like whatever. Mm. You know? it, it, it's for teenage girls, yeah. yada, yada, yada. Like I'm really cool and I'm really tough and I like serious ass metalcore, like F you, so... That's but now everybody likes it, even like the young TikTok kids, and yeah. like the young rich kids and stuff. People you know? who've only like, ever listened to hip hop, or you know, because they also love Post Malone and stuff, and like too. Juice World you know? and shit. So like, like that. they're wearing multiple gold chains, but also loving pop. <laughs> Which is kind that's of cool. how I started. I like that. I though. I'm that's down. That, that's it's cool. Come back, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because during that period where everything was like super serious and you weren't allowed to be happy, one of the things that people hated was people being successful. Yeah, like, because the, it was like true. you have to be an underdog. You can't be a sellout. Yeah, but all these rappers coming back to the scene, and in rap, it's all about being successful. Mm -hmm. Like it's all about how much money you've got. So them just bringing the idea that you're allowed to be successful yeah. into it, and everyone being like, "Oh, cool! If I can be successful, that's fun again." So it's mm -hmm. combining so the "let's leave this town" and the <laughs> "let's get this bag." Let's <laughs> leave this <laughs> town, like get the bag, and buy a mansion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like come back to the town and buy a house. Yeah, there, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> buy the biggest house in that town. Yeah, Which, I've never really described it like that, but that's kind of where it's at. Yeah, you can still hate your town, that. but you have it's to like get money. It's like I own this town now. <laughs> let's yeah. leave this town. Let's let's buy this town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bring bring people back. Let's get the economy going. Let's However we get there, as long, as long as it's there. Yeah. yeah. That's what it's about. Okay, so with that in mind then, what's your guys' goals? Because you guys, even through all this negativity, seem to have worked really hard. Like, I've seen, um, I know most of it was in America, so we saw less of it in the UK, but you did some pretty cool stuff. Like, I'm sure you did, like, a pop-up store or something for your album launch. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's pretty rare i think it's, just, uh, it's rare in england i've right. never seen a band yeah. do that before yeah i think we've prided ourselves on always thinking outside of the box with like marketing strategies and like just interactive stuff with our community like the people that have let us do this for so long now yeah. like i said we started 10 years ago multi like over 10 years ago mm -hmm. so now that we've built up this like close like fan base and community it's like what can we do that other bands haven't done that's like where we can just hang out with them and give back and do these like cool unique experiences so mm -hmm. pop up being one doing like movie premieres in a in a theater where we can hang out with them and sit with them and stuff like that yeah. like and and there's a list of stuff that we still want to do that we don't want just want to give away yet <laughs> yeah yeah of course, but <laughs> it's just like it's taking influence from outside of music like i'm i'm i love fashion so like i'm always looking at what's happening in that world that i think is really cool that can be applied in an interesting way to a to a band uh, you know, because it, it's music, but it's a business too. So like you want your business to look a certain way and you want to be able to try new things. And I think the pop-up was one of those things that I'm like, well, I've been to a couple like small brand pop-ups that, you know, they're maybe not from LA or something, but they're doing a shop here. And I go there and I'm like, oh, this is such a cool experience. Like to meet the person behind the brand, to see, like get something exclusive. And I think that's kind of where that idea was like, we got a new record coming out. What can we do that's fun and exciting for mm -hmm. someone who's going to be excited for that record more than just, hey, it's out. Go yeah. buy it. That's yeah. that's cool, man. I really like that that sort of idea because taking the fashion idea, I've got a few friends that own fashion brands and they've done the same thing. And where we've gone to the pop-ups, you have people from all over the country traveling to it. Yeah. So it just makes it a party, like in a shop, which is exactly. cool. So. Yeah, playing that to your album is is sick. Yeah. yeah, I feel like a lot of musicians put themselves in a box. They look at what other musicians are doing, and there's there's no reason why you can't do what other people are doing. Like, if you see something that inspired you, why not try to do it yourself? Yeah, yeah apply absolutely. it in a, yeah. in a different way. I think the right. best collaborations are, are not within that same like area yeah. that you do, right? When bands collab with other bands, that's cool, but is, isn't it much more cooler when, like, a clothing brand does a, ban a collab with a band, right. or, like, a band does a collab with a with a food company or a restaurant or something right. like that i feel like that's more like when we collab with course yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> honestly i think that's the reason i've been so excited about like this whole turnstile release like i've been a turnstile fan for a long time but i think what they're doing with their 
their new record is like so cool. They've done multiple collabs with Brain Dead, and they did a collab with this band called or this uh, clothing company called Carpet that I had never even heard of. Mm. And then I was like, oh, Turnstile's got new merch. Oh wait, this is actually a brand that's doing a collab with them, which. Mm-hmm. Now I like the brand. The brand is really cool. And now it's on my radar, which it wasn't before. And I think that's another thing that you could do as well. Like it's more eyes on it. Yeah. And it just makes people think that you're like more creative and artistic within your releases, you know? Yeah. And it, and it's, and it's also just like, I, I, as a band member personally like this thing or I'm friends with this person. Mm -hmm. Why not try to intertwine those, you know? Right. I think like on, on a, in a really broad sense, once you understand that, like, success isn't just for like one person like like a win for someone yeah. that like you know a win a win for neck deep is a win for state champs is a win for real friends and like all the way down the line and i feel like we all realized that a long time ago and we we uplift each other and we all do cool things to like like everybody eats you know <laughs> so everybody eats. everybody eats not everybody is there though not not, not everybody, everybody is there and that. i think that's why like you know, you could say like bands at our level or something are doing cool shit because we're not worried about keeping up with the Joneses in the scenes. I don't give a fuck what anyone else is doing. <laughs> I care what we're doing and I, I, I have complete faith in what we're doing. Yeah. So yeah. confidence is key. In confidence is key and realizing that like you don't have to like one up everyone around you. Just do what you want to do and be genuine and authentic. And I feel like you'll see results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really important, man. If you're doing something you genuinely enjoy, then it's not going to feel like work and a chore mm -hmm. and you're going to put more into it. You're going to get more out of it. Like, I yeah. think that's, we spent yeah, too that's long huge. now as a band saying yes to everything, like doing things that other people tell us to do, you know, mm -hmm. and just kind of following what the so-called formula is for a band like us, like from the public eye. Yeah. Now it's like, well, the only reason we're going to want to keep doing this now is to do it for us. Yeah, things that we yep. do. You've and got a pretty good team though, from what I can See, I'm, yeah. I think you're still with Pure Noise. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and yep. you, they've been like there from the start, right? You've the label's grown <laughs> yeah. as the band has. I mean, when like, we came into Pure Noise, it was one guy. Yeah, you know, like so <laughs> one band, one guy in debt, <laughs> and now it's <laughs> and now it's that same that guy house. doing much better uh, with a lot of people underneath him, and it's built because of what he's uh, laid the foundation for. Yeah, and uh, you know, we went through. We did th we did three albums with Pure Noise, and and are now going to do another one with him because of the connection that we have and yeah. like, you know, mm -hmm. the, the chemistry that we've built and the relationship we have, it goes back and forth. And it, that leads on to what I just said before, how it's like, we don't just do things because people tell us to do them. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got us, he leaves us with a lot of creative direction. Yeah. And like, you know, and like if, if things get to a point where we, where we challenge each other, like we work it out respectfully. Like we, you always hear like the uh, horror stories of labels, just like shutting down, taking their ball and going home. Right. We're going to shelf your record. Fuck you. Like, we're, we're in charge and that that's never the relationship we've had we've gotten into arguments but we we always figure them out and we always find ways to find like neutral ground so and it's the arguments are are kind of encouraging because it shows that they actually care they care yeah i think arguing over shit's important man yeah like if you're all agreeing yeah. then nothing's really gonna change you're never gonna find anything really different like if, right, sure. if you've got two completely different ideas and you sort of both have a strong opinion on those and you can work out a middle mm -hmm. ground or that leads to a third idea. That could be the better thing. So right. I think if everything's just plain sailing, it's not going to. Yeah. yeah like uh, gonna I remember talking much. to, to a band that I, I, I don't want to air it out because I don't know if they would consent to it, but they, they were with a label and they had put out their third record and fell off and they were like, the label told us everything we did was gold. You guys are amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. This is going to be huge. Whatever. Like, the, la the record sucked. They got dropped from the label. Like, it is what it is. Uh, and Jake has never done that with us. He's always been like, like, I remember talking about, he was talking to us about Living Proof. He's like, there's no secrets on here. We're like, wow, <laughs> fuck. And then we were also like, well, here's what I, th I, I remember talking to him and being like, here's what I think the singles are for our last album. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, we're on the complete wrong page. We're going to have to do a meeting. We're going to fly you out here now. <laughs> and like, I do, you know, I do I'm remember in New York, that. he's in LA. Like, so we're like, okay, let's get all the band out there, have a sit down and like talk about the singles because I feel one way about it. So right. then we found this middle ground and then we picked the singles for it, but it was on complete opposite sides. Mm -hmm. There's definitely labels out there with look at bands and be like, yeah, sure, whatever. Like, yep. yeah, that's fine. I mean, that yeah. even sort of happened with this, re with this record, you know, like Just Sound, I don't think <laughs> was necessarily any of our first picks. It was no, our, that was a la that, that like was label came noise. and we're like, this is going to be a strong pick. Hey, what do you guys think? And then we had to sit on it for a while. And he didn't say that's what's going to happen. He said, "Will you guys listen to it some more?" We and, consider and then hear it. me out. Consider mm -hmm. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did, and we were like, "Actually, yeah, let's go with that." Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. And so, sometimes you're too close to stuff, you know? Yeah, we spent so so long working on it and, and listening to it that we we're like, oh, well, this is my favorite. But, like, sometimes your favorite isn't necessarily what is the, the best movie. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah totally favorite just because it's your best. favorite doesn't mean it's going to speak to the, the right. most people. So. Right. Getting that outside perspective. It took us a while to learn that. Good, we always had yeah. our favorites. We're like, well, that's what we do then. Well, no, we got to think about like what. Sometimes with merch. Too. I was going to say yeah. the one thing I've learned <laughs> that's is that's my favorite shirt. Merch. We're selling shirt. Oh, hands man. down, no matter what. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. So anymore. if I see something come across, I don't like it. I'm like, that'll that'll rip. That's the one. <laughs> yep. yeah, exactly. <laughs> That was always the, actually the joke here for like five years with me and the music because during the serious time, anything that I thought was cool, they were just like, nope. <laughs> the club's not going to respond to that, man. That's crazy. But now it's the opposite way around. Mm-hmm. Now the cheery shit's come back. Like, yep. Oh, yeah. Good. It's good. Yeah. So but have you changed now? Are you, are you liking the more serious stuff? <laughs> My music cha- taste hasn't changed since like 2005. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> like, I'm very strongly cemented in 2005 with my music taste and my haircut. Like nothing's, <laughs> nice. nothing's developed for like 10 years. You're in the perfect business then. Yeah. Well, let's say so like 10 years. It's almost like, 20 years. Luckily you're in a place where like that can stick. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, things come back around though, don't they? Right. Mm-hmm. Actually talking about that. So you guys did a track with uh, Simple Plan, mm-hmm. which I fucking loved. Thanks. Simple plan. This is nothing to do with you guys. I just, the story popped into my head. So when I saw, I really, really loved Simple Plan back in like 2004, 2005. And I left school in 2005, I think. And my happiest memory of school, school sucked. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I really. School sucked. Yeah, fucking, it was shit, man. (laughs) So (laughs) didn't like it. I was dyslexic as fuck. So I was like shitting all my subjects. I was the Grebo with a skateboard and a guitar, so I got beat up. It wasn't fun. And the best memory is I had, I did art GCSEs. I don't know what, like, it's like the, the last exams. I don't know what qualifications you have oh, yeah, for, yeah, like, yeah. leaving school. But right. it's our qualification, like, for, for high school, senior finals. school. Sure. Yeah. Finals. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like finals. Same sort of thing. And the project was they gave us postcards, and we had to paint them in the wrong colours. And I was just like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> like, I'm not painting the grass purple. Like, it's it's just a shit project. I didn't like the teacher. It was like a gloriously sunny day, which is pretty rare. Like, yeah. over yeah. here. Usually the grass and is purple here. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, everything. It's not good, man. But it was an incredible day. And I was sat and I just thought, I'm not fucking doing this. And I was really good in school. Like, I didn't fucking break the rules. I was a bright pussy. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> This this was like one of the few times where I was just like no, and I remember sitting back like in my chair. I put my feet up on the desk and I had my hands. On, I had put my headphones on because it was like the only exam we were allowed to listen to music. And I just listened to Simple Simple Plan on repeat, looking out the window, thinking I'm never going to come back here. <laughs> and that's like that's my favorite. Hell. That's my favorite memory of school. So Simple Plan. That is like, very pop punk. <laughs> I must say, you and Simple Plan working through it. Oh my that's, gosh. Well, I I definitely like. Punished Pierre and the rest of Simple Plan when we met them, did the song together, went on tour. It's like, dude, I'm just a kid was my seventh grade alarm clock. I woke oh, up, yeah. it was seven. And like, I still tell that story. I love telling that story to people because it's then it's like, now we have the song together. Yeah, right. We went on cool tour together. Song. We're performing it every night. And I'm like, so this is you and I was like getting up to, and my mom is still like helping me get ready for school yeah. at that point. You know, like, like bringing <laughs> you breakfast, yeah. like Pop Tart out of the toaster. <laughs> no, dude. Pierre loved that. He, <laughs> he was so really stoked on that, that yeah. too. We formed this really cool bond because they still have so much youth in them and like mm-hmm. they're so active and active within the, within the scene. I think they make a lot of really good business decisions for their band as well and yeah. like shed a lot of light on us as well when it was in mm-hmm. the studio, yeah. on the road. Still, I can still text Pierre and be like, dude, what do you think about this? Or did you ever go through stuff like that? He's always got a story for everything, too, That's, which is awesome. It's like a really you know, cool older yeah, brother. Awesome. Yeah, it's really he cool. is. It was inspiring to meet those guys because I'm like, they have been through so much shit. They've been, uh, they've been a band forever. and They've been at the top. Yeah. And they've done some really, really amazing stuff. They have every reason to now be like a jaded. Yeah, just over well, maybe it. not even jaded, but like. You can be an asshole at this point in your life, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Well, but I they are the nicest, greatest guys. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 
when you've been doing something for a really long time, it's easy to stop appreciating it. Sure, yeah. exactly. Like, to just be like, oh, fucking tours, man. Like, yeah. I'm always tired. Like, right. Yeah, just all, all the little things that you take for granted. Yeah. So if you can be in a band for that long and still be like, man, life is fucking great. Exactly. Yeah, like, how lucky say, am I to do this? They're, they're the, the ultimate goal of like, man, I can only hope to still love what I do as much as they do and have been doing it for that long. Yeah. You know? So yeah. what is the ultimate goal then? I would love to do it as long as we can. But yeah. we've always we always add goals to our bucket list when we reach certain goals. Yep. You know? That's a big thing I tell like young young bands or anybody really. It's <laughs> like once you meet your goals, you have to set new ones. Yeah, absolutely. Like I mean, we're always happy when we like sell out a venue, right? Like we sold out the forum and we're like, Oh my god, this is amazing. But then like the next day we were like, Okay, what's the next one? You yeah. know, like you have to keep raising that bar and if you don't keep challenging yourself, you're just gonna slip into like, I don't know, just this spell of mediocrity and yeah, absolutely, man. Nothing matters. But. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, like, you're talking about the forum, like, one of our first big headliners here, mm -hmm. and then it was like, well, do we take a shot at, at the Roundhouse next time? Mm -hmm. So we did that, and that was our biggest headline show ever, ever yep. in, in the world. Like, that was yep. our biggest headline show ever, sold out at the at the Roundhouse. So now it's like, what are our goals now out here? Maybe Roots do. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it that? Or But now it's like, we've never done two nights in a row anywhere. Right, you right. You know, something like, well, I think we did, actually. Over here? Did we do it over here? Uh, maybe know. only opening for other bands. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't. I don't recall. So it's like now we just. But that's only on a tour scale. What are our other goals now, guys? Well, I was gonna say some of the reasons why I think we do those interesting things to you know market a record or or you know promote it at least have fun with it is is a goal for me. You know, outside of just creating the music and like doing that, it's just like I want to see if we can even do this thing and if it's cool. You know, because we all have interest outside of making music and outside mm -hmm. of being in a band. But if you can, you know, like I said earlier, apply those to this portion of your life, that's always been a goal for me is like push the envelope to do something right. else. Like I feel like Derek and I have been working really hard on the merch over the past like two years and just like bringing in influences and trying to, so that for me, a goal is just being like, how can I make this part more interesting or cooler? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another thing, We've talked a lot about uh, throwing our own festival. That is true. That I think that's another goal of ours, like that yeah. we that I still think about here and then. I'm like, I don't know if it's if it's necessary to start thinking about this soon now. Right, it's hard. You still got to wait for the world to be okay again. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's cool to think about it though, because it takes a long time to plan that sort right. of stuff. It like totally does. Right. So I think we we we're like in the total brainstorming ideas of it right now but I'd love to have this documented now in case it does happen. <laughs> <That one. laughs> it's yeah. on the cards. Uh, yes. yeah. yeah, no, that's cool, man. I mean, w the very first one never came to the UK, but that I was aware of, I would have been really young, was when uh, Linkin Park did it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just thought that, I guess it was yeah, an American tour. Oh, okay. Not so much a festival. I can't mm -hmm. remember what it was called. I don't mm, know. I don't remember. Oh, fuck, what was it called? But did sure they it do it over here as a festival? No, they, they didn't come to the UK. Oh, it was like okay, it was okay. advertised as a festival, but it was like a touring festival. So I don't oh, know okay. it was. Kind of like Ozfest or like something. Like an Ozfest yeah. on tour, but Summer like Summer Sanitarium? Style. Were they on that? No, I, I don't was, know. That was cool. I mean, th this no, was going like a long time back. Oh, okay. Right. Like, right. Oh, man. Like I don't remember. 20, 2002, 2003. But that I just remember seeing young. that and just being like, man, that's the coolest thing for a band to have their own festival. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that's that's awesome. I think it's a good goal yeah. to shoot for, man. I, th I think that's, that's one of the things that sets people apart because a lot of bands would just be like, well, it's not my problem. Yeah, I'm not the guy that has to book that. The fucking promote books a lot, and the agent puts us on it. A lot of people shy away from challenges, and I feel like we don't. Mm. I, I don't know. Like, it, d it it can be intimidating, but I feel like we gladly accept challenges and, like, like to do them. Mm. I don't know. I think the challenge a lot of the time is the fun part. Like, for me, when we do stuff here, like, the interesting part isn't actually it happening. It's the lead up to it happening, and it's coming up with the idea and being like, how the fuck do we do that? Mm -hmm. See, like, I'm, I'm somewhere in between where I'm like, I like coming up with the idea, and I like the celebration, <laughs> and, you know, it's doing it. But, the but everything in between, part, can somebody else do? <laughs> why, why don't you take a minute to talk about the music videos you just directed for the band, <laughs> and how fun, but... Not fun. It yeah, was so that you. was a, that was a goal for me. Was you know I I said I think I tweeted this like 2019 or something. I was like my goal for the year is to make a music like direct a music video, shoot a music video, and I didn't do it. <laughs> um, but last year I was like I would really like to take a shot at doing that. So when we were starting to talk about our music videos that we liked and ones that we'd done in the past, we decided 
we didn't really love a lot of what happened on the last record. And so this time around, I was like, all right, let me pitch some things. And uh, we had some good ideas, like little nuggets of ideas that we kind of ran with. So I, I, what Tyler was saying basically is the logistics of making that happen made me want to rip my hair out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we got a really great prod, prod, yeah. product. 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 Yeah. We got so a Ryan, really Ryan was direct, co-direct in all part of the process for um, three new yeah. music videos that we have. One is out. And the one that is out just came out for Just Sound, our new song, and it's um, the most insane video we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show you it after this yeah. if you haven't awesome. seen it. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it. it's like a parody for Bob Ross, the painter. and uh, It's crazy. Yeah, and we, we always knew we wanted to do a music video f- in that style. Like, how do we rip off Bob Ross or make it into a music video of ours? And I was always like, yeah, I'm down. Let's, let's go for it. So we started planning it, and then it comes up to like a week before we're supposed to do it. And I didn't realize that I had to be Bob Ross. Like, that I. <laughs> of course. In our heads, we were like, who the fuck else would <laughs> yeah, be Bob well, Ross? Yeah. I know. It's like, I, I, just, I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, cool. It'd be like a painting thing. And like, like some I don't know, random Maybe guy we're all part Ross. of a painting or like we're like the crew. And then they're just like, no, like, dude, no, you gotta, like, you gotta, you, you're the guy, you're Bob like, Ross. you're gonna, you gotta hold, I was like, dude, I got pissed at you guys, I was like, nobody <laughs> fucking told he, me he wasn't that happy. I had to be Bob Ross, and I was, I was pissed, I was about to not do it at all, it took a lot of convincing, but I put, it the, didn't I take put much fuck, convincing, it I took put, us saying you're going to do it, all, no, all <laughs> I said was, all I said was, I'm down to do it, I just wish someone asked me to be Bob Ross, and then I said, Derek, will you be Robert Ross? And I was like, I was like, okay, I guess. <laughs> so I put the fro on. I had a full mustache and beard, glasses, <laughs> old seventies clothes and stuff. And I did a good. painting music video, and it came out okay. And everyone loves <laughs> you're it. You're not like tempted to just stick with that look. No, fuck when no. you go on tour, just. <laughs> no. on stage. I think maybe if we play no. a Halloween show, it would be pretty fucking maybe. funny. That if would we be pretty. Were, good. If we brought it yeah. back, but we'll see. I uh, think it's. I think it's insanely ridiculous for that being the first music video <laughs> that has come out. A, a new song for us in two years, but uh, that's what we're talking about, though. <laughs> Fuck it, yeah. That, like, don't take ourselves so serious. Like the sky's the limit, and yeah. like don't listen to whatever thing. What don't listen to like what other people would expect or like what other people think, right? Yeah, no, I think that's cool, man. And I think the best ones come from the like the just the random fucking ideas where <laughs> yeah. It's just out of nothing. Can you just? That I don't even fucking know where that came from, idea. but <laughs> sounds fun. So let's do it. We've we've always kind of applied that to our our band. Like we're goofy, funny mm-hmm. guys. Like you know, we you know we used to make the Shot Boys episodes, and and like I don't think anybody thought those were as funny as we thought they no were. No fucking chance. Yeah, we had we had our own sitcom uh, that we would film on tour when we're bored. Uh, Wait, and, and it, sitcom. Yeah, like <laughs> it was whatever it was. Comedy. Come on. It was, but it was literally all a lot of inside jokes on right, our part right. that no one really got. But like our core fans thought it was funny and and still ask us to do it. It's a lot of work to do. Yeah, but it's just like fun. The music video was kind of an extension of that. It was just like, oh, this is just like a goofy thing that we mentioned once in the studio while we were watching Bob Ross, and Mm -hmm. we're like, we should do it. And then I was like, don't say that to me because I'll fucking actually. I'll make it happen. Like, <laughs> I'll do it. These guys. videos are just so like fucked now anyway though. Like they're not on TV anymore. So you have to go get them. And yeah. what's gonna make someone rewatch serious band angry in the woods with like maybe lights? No. Derek dresses Bob Ross makes you go back to the video <laughs> to watch it. So well, you need something that's gonna might, might people tell their friends. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You need a little and bit of shock value. Yeah. Yeah. And moment. replay value. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what Don Broca does really well is yeah, dude. make an insane music video that yeah, you they need do to do watch really well. again and again. The lead up to that boxing one, I legitimately thought Rob was gonna box that guy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, so I, did I. I. Yeah. No, I, I did as well. I thought yeah. that was actually a thing because he's all like ripped and like I'm like, dude, you're ready to fight. Oh, I like, got multiple <laughs> text messages. Uh, like for whatever reason, people were texting me like, "Yo, is Rob really gonna?" I was like, "Oh, so he didn't." He I was wasn't like, "There's boxing. no, no way. It was a joke." <laughs> yeah, what a cool idea. Like, see, that's awesome though. Yeah, like, cool. like act as if that's what's going well, on. Well, that man. was the only reason I think I knew that it was was a bit was because they did the exact same thing for. For the stag video. Oh, that's right. Where yeah. they were like, it's Tom. They, we went out in Vegas and we were like, it's Tom Stag. And they were like shooting some stuff. I was like, this is a bit. And then it turned out to be a bit for the music video. And I was like, this is God. I thought that was happening. real too. Like, no, it's no. fake as fuck. <laughs> All right. I'm just a, a, a dumb You're just piece a consumer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking got me on exactly. everything. They're good at it. Yeah. The soccer team. Yeah, oh whatever. 
Manchester Super Reds number one fan. <laughs> I love that. Insane. Don't fucking. put mics in front of us. We'll never, we will not <laughs> yeah. stop talking. Do you want to talk? Uh, that's good, man. <laughs> no, I just, the idea is it's just a conversation. So yeah. if things go, get carried away, then that's fucking great, man. We, like, we haven't really hung out in like two years. Yeah, I mean, can you tell that I mean, we haven't like actually talked in a while? Like, like This is the first show, right? Yeah. 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 This is our first show back. We haven't played any of these. So the two new songs that you heard us practicing in there, that was the first time we've played them as a band. Ever. Ever. <laughs> so I'm the first guy to hear and them. And this yeah. is our first press anything interview in two years. Mm -hmm. That's in person together. Right, I was going to say, right. we've been hanging out a bit on Twitch. Yeah. We've been streaming a lot. And we've been, you know, we meet every week to have a, you know, business meeting, band meeting, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we live across the country from each other, so we don't hang. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, like, uh, aren't a couple of you from New York? I'm New York. Yeah, Ryan is L.A., Tyler's Ohio, mm -hmm. and Evan, our drummer, is Connecticut. So we are in no way close to each other. <laughs> both me and Evan used to live in New York, but we both moved right. to be with our partners in different states. Did and Ryan, Ryan is from uh, Michigan. Yeah. No. Yeah, I thought, I thought yeah. I'd seen that. Mm -hmm. I, th I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like pretty arrogant in this podcast so far. But like, we we, we <laughs> you, deal. You come across <laughs> awful, man. <laughs> we, we we do deal with it pretty well. Like like the, like that the song just sound that came out. It was born out of Evan sending me drum MIDI and me just playing over it, and then me showing these guys and us being yeah. like, okay, cool, let's run with it. So like, where where most bands might like, you know, oh, we'll just wait to write together. We're like, no, like it's twenty twenty one now. We have, you know, all these drum software we have the tech i have a kemper we have the technology have, like yeah, why why would you not you don't need to it, i don't know never mind we're, <laughs> we're, yeah, yeah we're, we're not a plug in in the garage and practice like, every bro, week like, anymore oh, I, w I mean i do miss it a little bit i will say that every time we get together and jam and make those kind of songs like something different comes from that yeah, it's different kind of energy comes from that so is it more fun to do that or to like properly rehearse for something for me, I'm like half and half because like yeah, I was depends. pretty I was pretty against doing it like I, I think we kind of call it the like the L.A. way it now, the LA way. Um, where, you know, you kind of just write the song like in the studio, right. you know, you put down a, a placeholder drum or whatever, and then you come up with the riff or if you have a riff and then you just bounce off of that instead of just getting in a room and like being like, what do we got? Let's just make something out of thin air, basically. Right. I think I love doing the fact that we've done the last two records kind of half and half yep. that way. Um, I'm, I'm warming up to the idea of, of being able to do that. And I think it's, it's great to be able to have the way of send me a riff, send me a drum thing. I'll write it and then we'll show all the band or just getting in a room and just playing like we used to. There's good balance there. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it shows on the records too. Like a lot of the fan favorites are ones that we wrote together and a lot of the commercially successful ones are the ones that we wrote like like in in studio, you know yeah. that that we're hyper focused on like this like this has to be the best the course in the world versus yeah yeah. 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 It's so. nice though that you can do that. I mean, we're yep. separated, so we can do what we can like as a band. Like, mm -hmm. if we do end up in a room, or you can totally build a song in the time that you have set away in the studio, wherever that studio may be. Yeah. We just happen to right. record in L.A., so we meet up in L.A. and we can just build a song. We can write a full song and have it tracked in one day if we want. And we've never even played it together as a band. Until now, <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, we jam just sound. The demo sounds a, l a little bit different, but yeah, yeah, like we hadn't played it since we like finished it. I guess until yeah. there's no right today. or wrong way. Was to, it exciting to, today when you played it? Yeah, fuck yeah. And you heard awesome. it for the first it time. It actually together. was. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was good. Cool. Yeah, but but I also, it was like we can do this better. <laughs> yeah, we, so, we, so we right after this, last night and I was like, I don't know. Right after this, <laughs> like, we're literally going to go back out there and tighten it the probably fuck up. Probably play it like 10 times. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but, but it's exciting. You know, it gives, mm -hmm. it breathes life into the band and it makes us stoked to get back at it again. Yeah. So oh, yeah. we're just, uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting time. I think we, we see it in each other and like the, the energy that we have right now, just like hanging out and like being excited to be back together yeah. on the yeah. road, new music. Like it's a new chapter and, and it's, it's exciting. Awesome, yeah. man. I, I'm assuming then you're playing them at Slam Dunk? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Playing a song that we haven't even put out yet at yeah, Slam Dunk. Yeah, that's which right. Which I don't think we've ever done that as a band. Like, hey, here's a new song. You're hearing it live for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like 25% against it just because it doesn't elicit that fun crowd reaction. But That is the that is the argument or yeah. the, the discussion that we're having right, right now. Is like, do fans like to hear songs that they've never, ever heard before? But in this case, it's exclusive. It's the first I time we've ever do. played it, and I you've never they, heard it before. I think it's. I definitely think you have a point. Like it goes, 
it's probably half and half. Like some people are like, this is the coolest thing because I'm the first person to hear it. But then they're like, I can't sing along. You can jump or whatever, but you can't sing. I think the cool part about it is, and this was my pitch was there's going to be a lot of videos of it. There's going to be, it's going to be all over the internet. And then those people are going to be like, Oh my God. You know what? That's I think a we, great point, man. I think so, we did do this before, though, uh, because I remember very specifically one of our fans told me that she had watched a YouTube video of a new song to learn the words. Maybe a long time ago. Yeah, I think it was like four or something off of Around the World and Back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Then. It was it was ages ago for sure, but... Yeah. I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was, dude, that was like six years ago. But so I, we'll I, see how it goes over. Hopefully people like it. But it's a good point, and it's... If that happens and people are sharing it, then that's great advertising for the record. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if, yeah. it's also we, an energetic song, it. so you can rock out to it. If we yeah. nail it, nah, that that's cool, man. So on the festivals, then, which are your fest- favorite festivals to play? Mm. I I can't wait to play Reading and Leeds again. Mm. I really, am yeah. I wanted to say that, but I didn't want to like dunk. On, oh, I can't say dunk on Slam Dunk. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to Slam Dunk. You say okay, it. so Slam Dunk's really cool because it's like to me, it's like UK Warp Tour. It's like all bands in our space. But Reading and Leeds is really cool because you get to go watch like System of a Down or like Tool or yeah. something yeah. or like Download. It's like the right. same way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Slam Dunk is a Slam Dunk for us, right? Because it's it's our space and we know that we can crush it there. And it's like fun because it was the first thing that we ever did over here. I was going to say Slam Dunk is a home run. Yeah. <laughs> we have super warm memories attached to Slam Dunk. Yeah. There are a lot of bands that, American bands that come over and that is their first show. I yeah. think it's really, really cool. It yeah. is. Cause I do think Slam Dunk is a sort of direct equivalent of Warps just in that sort right. of way because there are so many bands that get heard up because right. of Warps. And I'm it's not even thinking right. about right. Warp Tour as a festival, even though it is a traveling right. festival. Right. So Warp Tour is one of our favorites. Yeah, that's weather yeah. too. Because it's nothing but full summer memories of the past six years of our bands. <laughs> right. Um, and, and and we owe so much to Warp yeah, Tour. Yeah, it would be dumb to ignore the fact. Yeah. I mean, Warp Tour is yeah. fucking awesome. Like, yeah. there's I'm sure I saw you guys on Warp Tour. I don't know which date it would have been. I did. Which year? 2018. Yeah, 2018 yep. was the last year. Oh, of yeah. Warp Tour. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I was at. And I did the San Diego and the Denver one. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. So were you guys on both of those? Yeah, we yeah. yeah. If it was 2018, we played every year. We were full yeah, summer. I thought, yep. Yeah, I thought so. Cool. I definitely, I, yeah, the, the days, like, you can't remember which one's which, but I'm, I know I saw you one of them. They definitely all blend together, and especially on something <laughs> like Warp Tour, because um, it's just a long, hot, sweaty summer. But yeah, it's like, is it dry heat? Okay, you're in the southwest. All right, now, now it's humid as fuck. You're heading towards Florida. <laughs> oh, now you can't breathe? You're in Denver. Yeah. Because you're so <laughs> high up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Denver to me was fucking awesome. I'd never been there before. Like, I've done quite a bit of America going over for work yeah. and different things. Nice. Um, so I did San Diego because I'd been to San Diego a couple times on holiday and just thought, because it was actually a family holiday that we went on because my brother, my younger brother was like, I want to go to Warped. Like, yeah, so awesome. I'd never been either. And we were like, man, it's going to be the last one. We have to fucking be there. So we just convinced the whole family to go. Um, <laughs> That's so we great. did. Mom yeah, and dad were in the pit. Oh man, they were loving it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it, it was awesome, man. Like, I was that they, they're here all the time as well. So they know a lot of the music. Nice. And yeah, we did San Diego. Did a week in LA just chilling and then drove from LA to, to Denver. Nice. Um, Very nice. And then nice did, little holiday. It was awesome, man. A couple of weeks in Colorado doing doing that, doing Smoking the magazine. Weed, sort of so. <laughs> eating, eating a bunch <laughs> of weed. I was going to say, I'm not sure if that's something we're talking about here. But <laughs> if you're looking for it, that's a good spot to get <laughs> No, yes, I, I weren't doing that with the uh, with my parents. Not with the oh, that's true. They're not yeah. down with that. My bad. <laughs> oh, they they to be fair wouldn't give a fuck. Like, they're really cool. Like they'd let us I've make ne- our own decisions. I've never never ever yeah. smoked weed. Yeah, need, yeah. No. Which camera am I looking at? I've never ever smoked. <laughs> <laughs> this ever. is this band is against drugs. <laughs> Say no. Um, I'm personally not against drugs, but I don't do them. I'm just like, no, I don't care I'm what not, anybody else does. I'm yeah, just not going to get involved. This is all a joke. D- like, don't take any of this seriously. American, American sarcasm. <laughs> give drugs the finger. Like we give stigma the finger here at Uproar. Give st- I'm just uh, looking at stigma that Stigma the finger, right? <laughs> stigma the finger, that's stigma our mental health finger. charity. <laughs> Respect. The, uh, the mental health charity we launched in 2019. That's and awesome. then everything we had planned for it got cancelled for lockdown. Oh, and shit. Now we're, we're back to square one. So. Oh, fuck. Well, I feel like you'll have a lot of people to help out because the last year and a half was pretty fucking Yeah, tough. so now's a good time for us. Yeah, absolutely, man. People need it now. So, yeah. yes. There'll be a lot going on with that, I think. Fingers crossed. It's yeah, funny. Man. It's funny to talk, think about that now is because, like, despite how difficult the last, you know, two years, pretty much was i feel like 
us coming back into this, all of us are a little bit more mature. Mm -hmm. All of us feel like we're in a little bit better spots in our life. And I think that's going to reflect uh, moving forward as far as the band. So I'm like really excited about that too, because we spend so much time on the road that when we were home, I was like, I'm not just going to sit on my ass. Like I started going to therapy. I'm on medication now. I lost a bunch of weight. Like I was, I wasn't happy about COVID, but I was like, finally I have time to look after myself. Yeah. That's exactly how, yeah. yeah. How I think all of us felt. I mean, dude, Evan was cycling like 50 miles a day. I'm Mm -hmm. like, dude, you didn't have time to do that while we were on tour. Evan shares his fitness stuff with me on, on our Apple watches. So I always see it's like Evan finished a workout 39 miles. I'm like, (laughs) I'm a piece of shit. You're like, I got to get on my Peloton. It took me a while to get on the physical game, but like in, in a sense of like having the time, like creativity and like becoming an entrepreneur or starting a business. That's something I finally had to, time for as well so it's just like whatever you wanted to use your time for just stay busy with yourself but that's another way to you know get through that and stop watching the news i watched a lot of the news oh my god Uh, i did that for the first three weeks then realized it was the worst thing you could do you definitely need to stay informed and not be an ignoramus (laughs) (laughs) but such a good word but uh yeah yeah, no, I agree with that. Like, I, I right became a little start. obsessed. With, like, I, I, I Google COVID cases every day to see the trends. I'm like, where are we trending? How are we doing? <laughs> oh, where I are we agree. going? What states are we going to? I agree what are we all of it, about? man. Unless I need to know something, I'm just like, I don't. I'm like that too, honestly. <laughs> you, 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 you get sucked in. Yeah. And then I, I think, like, if you get you start getting sucked in, you start worrying about shit. And, right. Like, uh, most of it actually doesn't fucking matter. There's such you. a divide, like, too. So it's like. I mean, that's true. Yeah. And unless Bad something. Divide. Cool, thank you, dude. Unless something affects me directly or like the people around me, I'm like, okay, I don't, I'm not going to get sucked into that and start obsessing over it because it makes no difference. Mm. Like, right. It's I mean, cool to know what's going on in the world, but respectfully, I, I have to disagree. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I do I'm feel like it is. I, I feel you. <laughs> I do feel like it is part of our uh, obligation, like given the privilege we have, you know, just being in this position to raise awareness on things that might affect people who don't have platforms or voices or anything like that. So even if it doesn't affect the direct us. Yeah. As, like, as yeah. I mean, like what's going on in Texas right now is absolutely shameful, you know, but what is going on in Texas? Uh, they signed a fetal heartbeat abortion ban into law. So you can't get an abortion uh, anytime past six weeks. Uh, most women don't find out they're pregnant until past six weeks because, you know, like if, if you factor every four weeks for a cycle, missing two weeks and then being being able to like schedule an, an abortion or I mean, it's just ridiculous it's just yeah just it's not having the act just not having the choice you know i think it affects a lot of yeah Pro, uh, pro-choice doesn't mean pro-abortion but we shouldn't be like making laws regulating women's uteruses in agreed, my opinion agreed. but you know that i'm with whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know that doesn't affect us and that's what we're saying all. is so, still, so they're still making the rules more strict so yeah basically like you can't yeah. get an abortion after six weeks which is like Bad. I, I, okay, yeah. yeah I, they, I banned it, they banned it. They banned it. They banned it. And and now also they're offering a ten thousand dollar bounty if you find a like a woman trying to get an abortion after six weeks, they will give you ten thousand this is like some real handmaid's tale shit. Yeah. It they is. will give you ten thousand dollars if you turn somebody in. That's really fucked. That is that's really fucked. fucked up, man. But that doesn't affect me, but I'm I'm gonna say some shit yeah. about it because that's yeah. fucked up. That's I think that's actually crazy. Though, that seems that's like a movie. Like, that's a big deal. Because yeah. the world is going to shit <laughs> <laughs> fast as fuck. So that's wild. Something there are a lot of things as like, important as that, then yeah, totally. Right. There are a lot that's of the shit I mean. That that's, are yeah. like that, that kind of fly under the radar because people don't pay attention. I right. think. You know, and even even with, I mean, we don't have to go into this, obviously. Right, of yeah, course. I, I, I'm with you, Ty. I think you got to care whether it affects you or not. And I, I understand that it it is really difficult because it creates worry and anxiety. And, and, you know, sometimes you're like, why does the world feel like this? Like, I don't want to feel like this, so I'm going to pretend it's not there. But the world's on fire. I so, think it's like just... Literally, climate change is yeah. real. And... <laughs> shit is fucked like and so let's go there now <laughs> like literally like the entire united states is on fire or underwater you pick i live in ohio i'm fine for now <laughs> we're all gonna Coast die good Coast we're all fucked. gonna fucking is there die, something dude. else you want to talk about <laughs> i think we should stay on this man you're on a roll i was gonna say 
Let's check off all the topics, <laughs> bro. Okay, yeah. Fuck, man. We can go New there. coming out. Can, <laughs> and it's about climate change. <laughs> okay, give me your opinion on climate change. <laughs> I'm just going to let you know that it's real. And uh, it exists. It, science deniers drive me insane. Science is real. <laughs> I'd like to go on record and say our record is not actually about climate change. It's not change. about climate change. It's not, guys. I don't want to make really jokes good, about though. things that are serious. Can we please change this? It's really yet? good. Our yeah. new record's going to be dope. It's not about climate change. <laughs> I but think making a joke about you, serious things is a good way to get people talking about it. Though. That's true, though. That's I true. think if you don't think that climate change is real, prob- just don't buy our record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. If you're like a science denier or, I mean, on the way in here, I was telling you, I'm at, I'm at war with people who spread misinformation because look at what is happening to our parents' generation. Their brains are fucked. They're like reading articles that aren't even real. And now yeah, people my, are taking horse dewormer to cure COVID when you can just get a fucking vaccine that's free. Oh yeah. The horse dewormer is 200 bucks. On an economic standpoint, you're spending money on something that doesn't work. What's a horse dewormer? Horse dewormer. <laughs> it's a medicine a they give horses when they have worms in their stomach. Oh, well, that makes perfect sense. Oh, that's what Joe Rogan took? Yes. Yeah, I it's heard called like that. ivermectin or something. Huh. Dude, I, well, I, well, maybe doesn't I this to guy talk to people on his own <laughs> podcast every day? And he spreads misinformation every <laughs> single day. He told people not to get the COVID vaccine like last month and I was irate. <laughs> My entire livelihood depends on herd immunity. I mean, I the, the one thing, I don't care whether people take it or not. My, the thing, I don't know if this is a thing in the US, um, but I think in two weeks they're voting in the UK whether to make it mandatory. And oh, I okay. think that's fucked That up. will lead I, to a I civil war like in the States. Like, yeah. I think see, you should make your own decision. Right. But is public health your own decision? If it's your health. Like, the, okay, so... The, but the but we I are part it, of a society as a collective. We are. But, okay, so... And I, I, I've had it, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> but, okay, so... so He's about to run for the health. For, for, the, sake, for the sake of arguments... <laughs> yes. If, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but just as for the sake of mm-hmm. the argument, if you don't feel comfortable going out, if other people haven't taken it, then I see that as your choice to stay in. Whereas why should it be your cho- choice to force me into something that I don't feel comfortable with? Why is your comfort more important than mine? Do you guys and still smoke inside restaurants here? No. Did that get outlawed back in like the early? Yeah, they haven't done that. I don't think it Wow, right? And you, yeah, know, that, you, know, you know how many people were like, well, you just don't have to eat here. They were putting you at risk with secondhand smoke, something that could kill you, lung cancer, uh, seatbelts in the 70s. Same thing. You put on a seatbelt just fine because you are you got the vaccine just fine because you're smart. But when something is a crisis that concerns like everybody, it's not just about you. Mm. It's about everybody. It's like global. It's, it's about everybody, but... And- I don't. I don't, okay. I don't see why other people should have the right to force something on you that you. Don't I feel do agree, with. and I do think it's government Fake. overreach to force people to do that Agreed. shit. I want people to want to get it, and I feel like people don't want to get it because, because they've been the reading these fucking all this misinformation. It's going to make you infertile. Literally, my girlfriend is pregnant and she's vaccinated. I can guarantee you, it does <laughs> not. Thank you. It does not make you infertile. <laughs> Living proof, but I'm I can right understand. Here. I, can, I, I can definitely understand the hesitation that some people feel towards getting it. Absolutely, it's a new yeah. thing. Yeah, you know, it's it's, uh, you know, it is a drug trial. You know, not that I don't think that there has been a ton of testing and that there has been a ton of lead up to in understanding of vaccines mm-hmm. and whatnot. It, it is technically a trial, but I think what. You have something to I say just I, I I think it's been tested significantly more than any other vaccine that we've all taken in history. I I, I mean it's been people being vaccinated since December. It's September first today, September second. Nine months. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, we could go on and on about this for hours. For I just sure. I feel like calling it a trial is like not doing justice to the people that work their fucking ass off. It was so, in a trial phase, fair. and now it's like I mean, at least Pfizer is fully. Accepted by the uh, FDA. C- the FDA or yeah. yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I understand uh, hesitancy, but hesitancy like hesitancy is is kind of what I was getting there. But like you, you, you go to your doctor and you're like, hey, what do you think? You you've studied your entire medicine your entire life, and then people are like, no, like for some reason, these people b- think they know more than other people that have like dedicated their entire life to it. The CDC's budget is like eight billion dollars, and all they do is research on diseases, mm. but. I know more than them. Fuck no, I don't. Yeah, they because, know. Okay, you did so, read a meme so on what Facebook, if? though. You read a fucking meme. <laughs> this, this is a legit thing. I won't say any names. 
but I've okay. So in this place, we've got the venue. We've got, we've got practice rooms. So mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of bands that come in and practice, all local. And there's a member of one of the bands that was a very regular customer here that had the jab and actually got a brain clot and died. Gotcha. And it, on his death certificate, it says uh, death due to COVID vaccine complications. Mm-hmm. So that's a very real consequence for somebody that they're, they're fucking dead. Yeah, yes. That has to make the rest of his family and his band members and the people he's close to right. very cautious about taking the sure. jab. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, using I, them I as an example, they're very close to something that actually happened. They might be a minority, but those people, yes. yeah. I think it's wrong for them to be forced. They, no one should be forced. Yeah, no, no, no medical decision should be forced. I, I, I want to make that clear. Uh, but however, the risk of blood clots after contracting COVID is like 500 times stronger than getting one from the vaccine. Like, I mean... Yes, there, there's risk involved in everything. Any procedure you ever have done in medicine. I had eye surgery when I was 18. They told me I could lose vision in my eye. I didn't, but I accepted that risk when I went in. Yeah, and if you would have, if you would have lost your vision, you probably would have been upset. But you, I would have been mad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you, you accepted the risk because you thought, you know, what may come on the other side is going to be better than what I'm going through And, right and now. That, that's exactly the thing with the COVID vaccine. Like, yes, there are certain side effects. Uh, you might feel like shit. You might get a blood clot and die. Like the entire range is there, right? But if you get COVID, you might fucking die. Way, way higher chance of you might fucking die than if you take the vaccine. I don't know. I mean, again, we could go on and on, on, and on for hours, but I'm okay, just... circles. <laughs> we're talking about having fun I want to go back to having fun, to having fun. <laughs> just like trying to do whatever we can to get back to a spot where we can do what we do right where we can where we can tour and, yeah, absolutely, and not have man. to worry about things yeah and I also just want like people to not be fucking dying and like people hooked up to ventilators and you know I mean God bless the NHS and you know whatever whatever they call it in the states like nurses and doctors and ERs and everything that have been doing this for like almost two years now no, yeah about two years now and people just still think that they're fucking assholes and this is a hoax and like I don't know man the whole thing just drives me crazy so that was that <laughs> <laughs> clip so it that's like one of those things where I think going back to what I originally said if you go too far in you just start stressing so it's sometimes oh, yeah. just take yourself away from it i don't watch the news because of that reason right so. yeah i feel but <laughs> yeah we'll move move, move back on. to fun things <laughs> i also think it's very so, punk rock to take a stand so to have a voice so, and yeah to have yeah. an opinion uh, I, think I, it's, think, I think it's important to have an opinion i think that's something that that definitely got lost in like the last five to eight years is like am i allowed to like say this am i allowed to believe this but like i don't know Punk rock that, got I super think that's soft. Still pretty lost. Yeah. Right now, I think unless you have a, the opinion that I saw Green Day the other day, and not only are they like politically right on the nose, but like they showed a little montage before they played, and Trey Cool lit his drum set on fire. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's very punk. <laughs> I don't think they've lost that touch at all. No. Yeah. So I want to light. That's an some opinion that I have, though. That when someone's playing drums, I wish it was on, on fire. fire because <laughs> just as a general rule, <laughs> because unless fuck there's drums. other music happening around it, stop, stop it, stop playing. Just there's no need. <laughs> You're annoying me. <laughs> Evan's gonna be so mad when he sees that. But clip. drums are our least favorite thing in the world. <laughs> I, the loud. drums are not They're my least favorite thing. I love the drums. I don't like hearing drums playing loud by themselves. That's yeah, that's saying. what I mean. So if yeah. you are, set yourself on fire. <laughs> set the drums on The drum's on fire, fire not yourself. <laughs> and, Come on. And yourself. And yourself. And yourself. <laughs> yeah. Cover all the bases. Self-immolation. Any thoughts? <laughs> no no anyway, thoughts. Head empty. <laughs> Any thoughts? Back to climate change? Or? No. <laughs> you could just leave your drum set in the middle of the fucking desert. It'll, it'll just catch on coming. fire. I knew that was coming. <laughs> It will eventually catch fire. Or it'll be flooded out, and it'll just get washed away. We're good. Let's we'll <laughs> keep moving. <laughs> okay. What else you got? We have a couple questions that were sent in, so okay. I'm going to read those. All right, let's get it. Oh, man. We're First good. question, what's your See, opinion on climate <laughs> change? <laughs> I wish. Okay, so these are for anyone. They're not very interesting questions, but they were sent in, so I'm going to ask. That's fine. What's your favorite song to perform? You can all answer that one. Um... Mine's got to be Secrets still. It's just real fun. Yeah, Secrets is awesome. Um, I love some of the more dancey songs, like our song Frozen, and I've always liked our song Lo- Losing Myself as well. Yeah, Frozen for me is particularly fun, and um, I've just always loved playing All You Are Is History because the crowd reaction is always pretty 
stellar. Mm. Yeah. Lit. Do you ever just play a song that wasn't planned just because you feel like it's going to go down right? No. No. <laughs> no. Actually, I think yeah, we ever done it? Maybe in a, maybe acoustically. We I remember one time we we did play over the line on a whim oh, yeah. in in Europe somewhere. We were like, let's just do it. Cuz they kept punishing us like, yeah. please fucking play this song. We were like, we don't want to. And they were like, <laughs> but we want you to. We were like, okay, we haven't done we'll it do in it. years. Yeah. We don't even have like, like a click right, we'll set it up. Go. We might fuck, fuck it up. It. Fuck it but actually I mean, was super fun. It gets us excited though if someone yeah. wants to hear something that you didn't already have planned. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. The next question was I've already said that. What's your favorite festival? Oh, yeah, that's right. Wow. So we don't need to go back over that. Actually, what was the favorite festival? We kind of gave you a really broad answer. Yeah, we did. We yeah, said it, was, it was just generally we like I think I think it was Reading and Leeds that we came to a conclusion so, on. Right. Yeah. What's the favorite in America? Warped Tour. Warped yeah, Tour. Probably, yeah, probably probably Warped Tour. I mean, I, I would had love it. to play Glastonbury if they would have a band like us, but seems seems weird. <laughs> Maybe. They've got a pretty diverse it sort of lineup, I, I think. Like it you used to be like pretty Pretty rock. It's a huge festival. Pretty yeah. alternative, it's, you know. Mm. That's yeah, ju- that's Maybe. the reason I want to play because I just used to watch like old videos of. I've of seen a lot of old videos from that bands festival playing too. In, that, in the nineties, but of course, of course. And what's your favorite band personally? Oh my gosh, I fucking oh, hate this question. It's, it's a tough question because I have hard. like my I have like my OG favorite bands. You know, like top of the list is obviously like you know Jimmy World starting line. But, like, I, I listen to a lot of pop country now. Like, I, I spent my morning listening to Luke Combs. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> really couldn't be any different. If you want a country night, we're starting one here. Oh, my God. Yeehaw, we're boys. Into Let's it, go. Uh, Paramore's always been one of my favorites. The starting line as well. Um, I don't really have a new favorite band right now. The a starting line are the only band I ever fangirled to. Oh, yeah? Yep, straight up fangirled. So, we this year's the first time I don't have a stage at Slam Dunk, but mm. for like eight, nine years maybe, we uh, uprooted like a stage there. Yeah, yeah. yeah and we'd right. do the after parties when it was in Midlands. And we did the one after party, and we had five or six bands all kinks. It was, I don't know, which wherever the main room was. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was about four or 5,000 people in there. It was it was awesome. Mm-hmm. And some of the guys from Yellow Car came up. Some, it was when New Fangoria were playing. They came up and we were just... It were all, and I was stood there thinking, this is extremely cool, but right. obviously I don't want to act like a dick. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> Kenny from the starting line came over. And I just took a moment and thought, no, I'm going to do it. And I just... Fully fangirled. You <laughs> went like, in. You, you know, did. I just I went like, like no, I'm gonna. One. This is my, my. He's a good one to do it to because I feel like out of all those bands, like he maybe is like the most like enigmatic. Like he's like kind of you know shrouded in mystery. I I personally he feel didn't that expect way. it, man. Yeah, like we were surrounded by a lot of people, and I was getting pictures with him. Fuck you, and like <laughs> selfies. I was telling him how much I loved him, and he was just stood there like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> We did, we, <laughs> he's, he's an interesting guy, but a really, really cool guy. We yeah. did their holiday show, and, I mean, you've probably been through it, too. You meet all these people and bands you like, and then, you know, they sit here and, you know, yell about climate change on your <laughs> podcast. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you you meet these people that, that you once maybe thought were awesome, and then they're, like, not awesome. So when we played at Starland, I was like, I'm not meeting them. I'm not fucking doing it. I was it. very scared, too. I was well. like, I won't do it. I don't need it. I've met too many people. I've been let down too many times. But yep. I've heard that I should have because he's very He's sweet. a great guy. Yeah. We're, we're great. We Do you want to tell me who let you down if we believe that? Oh, names. I could not <laughs> fucking possibly say it. We could give you the sort of... T- if, t- if anyone's going to do it, it's going to no, be time. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> sir. Yeah, how much shit are we allowed to talk in this podcast? I, I won't. We'll I, come back and do another full s- shit talking. I'm using my platform for good. <laughs> That's going to be part not two, enough. guys. We don't have enough time to go there. Right Uproar <laughs> presents talking shit with Ty Zow. It's finally here. My favorite favorite band is uh i don't know third eye blind maybe Checks yeah. out. uh as cities burn is a, is one that maybe you wouldn't expect but love that band i actually I, don't know that band it's an awesome band you should listen to them i'll check it out man i don't know if they were they ever U- uk like did they did I the don't uk know. like I don't, think, burn? I don't think they really nah. made a a wave over here, but when Ryan first joined the band his email was as 30 as cities burn rock at yahoo.com <laughs> It's I just gave out your email. Still, <laughs> Sorry, I was doxed around. It's actually my, that's actually my PayPal email. So if you do okay, want to send... Okay, that's actually... You send, I, I didn't want to say it was your PayPal money, email. Go for it. Like, you Ra- know? I had like reimburse baggage to Ryan when he first joined the band. He's like, yeah, it's at citiesburnrocket.com. Oh, I was like, oh. Anytime I'm buying something on eBay, I'm like, 
just waiting for like an email from someone being like, I also love this band. <laughs> you saying that just made me real, just thinking about as cities burn. It made me realize that circus survive is another one of my favorite bands as That's well. Cool. I just had to throw that out there. Similar right, so guitar just, vibes. Yeah. In those bands. Okay. So right. if you can imagine. Awesome. Yeah. I think Sick. what, what time are we on dude? <laughs> Oops. So he was just being like, minute. fuck you. Shut up. Stop One talking. single hour. Awesome. We did it. <laughs> I think we're pretty close to wrapping it up. I want to I yeah. end with one more thing, though, because you said Paramore. Yeah. Paramore, I haven't met. And I regret not going up and meeting them. So I didn't know who it was at the time, but they were playing in Birmingham. They were supporting Newfound Glorious. This is like quite a while back. Oh, yeah. And. I had gone, there's a big shopping center called The Ball Ring, and I was in The Ball Ring with one of my friends, and he pointed at this girl and was like, dude, that girl's amazing. She's so fit. I want to go and I want to go and talk to her. And I was like, all right, go talk to her. And he was like, oh, I'm, I'm really scared. Like, will you give it? Will you, will you go and ask for a number? And I was like, no. Like, I don't fancy her. <laughs> like, man up, man. <laughs> don't be a pussy. Right, go. Yeah. And, and then nothing happened. And then we went to the show, because we were only going for New Fan Glory. Yeah. And we were stood there at the front, because obviously, I. Like, queuing right at the fucking barrier yeah. for, for, for the band, for the headline. And then the girl that was in the ball ring came out and it turned out it was Hayley Williams. Oh, no shit. And we were so gutted that neither of us went and actually spoke to her. Wow. Well, you that that could, that could, who knows where that could have went? You maybe missed out on a whole something, you know? I'm, I'm pretty confident if I'd spoke to her, we'd be married right now. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and I love that confidence, man. I love that, dude. And you never, but now you'll never after, know. After, so... You'll never know. Uh, we've got a cool Haley Williams story. Well, one of the first times we came, maybe second time we came to the UK, mm -hmm. we were, um, we, we, well, it was during Thanksgiving, yeah, which obviously isn't a holiday over here. Yeah. No. <laughs> and in, you in guys the, don't give thanks. You guys just don't <laughs> it, it give just thanks. Just in general. You, you just Stress give cheers. cheers giving. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. and, uh, we were looking for somewhere to celebrate it because in the U.S. you eat turkey and like you couldn't find anywhere to eat turkey here. And we had a day off. So we ended up just celebrating Thanksgiving at a Nando's, right? Yep. Was it at a Nando's? It was at a Nando's. Yeah, with just our band, Newfound Glory, and Haley Williams. So if, if that was the only time we ever met Haley Williams as well yep. and hung out with her was on Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Haley. Celebrating it in the U.K. at a Nando's. Chicken. That's pretty cool, though. <laughs> Please bring our band on tour. We love your band. <laughs> Take us on your cruise. Thank Just you. saying oh God, that please. you spent <laughs> Thanksgiving with her means like people are going to think you were tight. And I fuck. gave her much yeah. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Amazing. I was quiet and awkward as fuck. So. We probably were all <laughs> yeah, quiet and awkward. I actually don't think I even met her. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely was there. there. I remember getting ice cream afterwards and like we were looking at ice cream flavors together. That was about it. <laughs> okay. Ah, mint chocolate chip, huh? <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. Chunk. Anyway, see Just you later. The situation. Amazing. Good I like price. that. Well, I think we're just about out of time. So really appreciate you guys talking. It's been Absolutely. awesome. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks, thanks for, for having up us. with us. <laughs> if you made it through it's this podcast good, and didn't turn it off when I got on my soapbox, thank you so much. <laughs> if you did, I'm sorry. Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Uproar. Uproar. <laughs> thank you, guys. We'll catch you in the next podcast. Love it. Oh, Christ.